Uncle Doug. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like you are... Uh, this is a dumb question. I can't believe I'm even asking this. That you are the center of the universe? Every day? Yeah. I, uh, I, I realize that, and I, um, I, I, I think we need to talk to Dan to see if he can talk some sense into you. Don't, don't take this away from me. No, 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 right no. Now. Don't worry, Doug. I'll give you plenty of, uh, of, of uh, apologetics for why you are, in okay. fact, the center of the universe. I oh, appreciate excellent. that. Um, I actually launched into my topic today while looking at a website called, quote, and you guys need to, might need to go there, crossonthemoon.com. Oh, boy. Which is exactly what you think it is. They want to put a cross on the moon. It's, oh, my uh, the, God. Really? They've been raising money for it. Uh, it, it. I don't think they met their goal. but uh, <laughs> That's a and pity. It's, a, it's an old site, but it, it's there, and, uh, and it's, still, it's still hanging out. Jesus. I mean, at least if you burn a pile of money, you can warm your hands over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But what's funny is I was sort of poking around on their site, and they wrote about Galileo. Hmm. And in a way that actually made more sense than it should have, and I was just sort of that that got me thinking about uh, Galileo, and that got me thinking about uh, heliocentrism. Hmm. Yes, uh, which is the crazed notion that maybe all the things in our solar system rotate around the sun and not the Earth. Anyway, I will say this: I did a whole lot of reading and went down a whole bunch of rabbit holes, as is my wont. Uh, and this is my actually my second run at writing this because I like science and history and the first run kept getting longer and longer and was threatening to become a textbook. So mm. uh, here's a quick synopsis of what I wrote before, or I'll attempt that anyway. Everybody was wrong about the way the universe worked for a long time. The cosmology of the Bible was laid out in the first chapter of the first book, which was basically a flat earth with a giant glass bowl over it and a bunch of lights stuck in the bowl that rotated around the earth. That was basically the prevailing view for millennia, and not just with ancient Jews. Ancient Chinese, Indian, American peoples all had roughly the same assessment, um, which I think is an understandable assessment, you look up at the sky, you see all the things rotating around you. It sure. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then a Greek guy named Aristotle popular, popularized the notion of a spherical Earth. And then a Polish dude named Copernicus figured out that we were orbiting the sun and not the other way around. And suddenly all of cosmology was flipped on its ear. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of the mucky mucks of the church during Copernicus's time were on board with his new model. But... He was still so scared that he didn't publish it until he was crazy old, and he died before anybody could read it and get mad. So yeah. most treated his theory as an interesting notion until an Italian dude named Galileo Galilei, the man so nice they named him twice, <laughs> went, hey, you guys, that, that guy was right. And then he was tried for heresy. Yeah. Why heresy, you may ask? Well, it ain't just Genesis that the Earth-centric Christians were basing their ideas on. Palms, ni- Palms, <laughs> Palms, <laughs> Psalms. The Book There's of Palms. In there. The Book of Palms. Palms. The Book of Palms is a uh, was a. Uh, I mean, it, it was a great casino back in the day. Anyway, it was. Um, the Book of Psalms ninety three says, "Quote: The world is also established that it cannot be moved." Psalms ninety six says exactly the same thing. First Chronicles 1630 says, Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Uh, if you were in Salt Lake City a couple weeks ago, you know that's <laughs> not true. <laughs> um, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 5 borrows from Hemingway, saying, The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to his place where he arose. So. Uh, their idea was the earth stays put, everything else moves. Uh, but, you know, this was sort of the, the idea of the idiots of the past. Yes, so when the that was geocentric challenged, model. Right. When that was challenged, yeah. well, let's just say Galileo's life didn't end great. Here's mm. the thing, though. When I first thought of doing heliocentrism as my topic, I thought I'd be focusing on the 1600s. But when I started digging... 
I realized that Galileo and his trial and persecutions weren't the real story. The real hmm. story isn't the idiots of the past. We have way better idiots right here in the present. <laughs> so, uh, listen, the world has known for hundreds of years that the sun was the center of our solar system. Every observation of the stars since then has confirmed it beyond any doubt. But that damned Bible still exists, and there mm. are large groups of people who still think it's supposed to be taken literally. That, that's not a very smart thing, but there they are. So what do we do with an ancient book that has zero understanding of how anything works that we know for sure is true? Well, the way we square, how do we square that with a whole bunch of very smart people figuring out brand new stuff on a semi-constant basis? I think we should turn to the current gold standard of turd polishing, the pinnacle of Academia Moronica, Answers in Genesis. Hooray! Yes, our dear friends at Answers yes, in Genesis. indeed. The impressive <clears throat> organization that brought us Ken Ham's giant ode to the impossible, the Ark Encounter. The group totally dedicated to twisting and contorting biblical passages until it's kind of possible that they actually do fit in with modern science if you ignore the right stuff and deny other stuff and squint yeah. real hard. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so now, before we get into their weeds, I have to warn you, these people are easily confused. So <laughs> we have to wade through a lot of bizarre extraneous stuff to get to their answers. For example, in an article about Earth's placement in the cosmos called, quote, the center of the universe on the Answers in Genesis website, you might find yourself understandably befuddled when uh, the first subheading is, quote, evolution. And yet, <laughs> Answers in Genesis is not the only place you'll find this startling little entanglement. All over the web, Bible literalists can't seem to use the term Big Bang without also, using, without also mentioning Darwin. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, I guess these guys, I guess these are, the two findings of science that most distress them, so they squish them together and don't worry about the fact that they have literally nothing whatsoever to do with each other and aren't even in related scientific fields. You but, know what? You know what the connective tissue is? What the Jews? <laughs> Somewhere, totally. guys. We're just going to end there, right? There, <laughs> you, blew, you blew it wide open. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, the article that I'm referring to in Answers in Genesis was written by a German guy named Dr. Werner Gitt. No, I didn't make that up. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, Dr. Gitt. Get me Dr. Gitt. <laughs> Dr. Gitt. You know, guys, uh, listen, Ken Ham, did, <laughs> Mr. Ham, Dr. Gitt, if you're just making up names... <laughs> Just do some Googling first, all right? right. Get me Just... Professor Dolt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all own goals all the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually know if he's German. Anyway, Dr. Werner Gitt. Uh, probably. Yeah, Werner, uh, probably. In, he's not indeed, Korean, I can tell you that. <laughs> he starts his Answers in Genesis essay with the word evolution, then <laughs> proceeds not to mention anything having to do with evolution whatsoever. He just says that, quote, when one considers the consequences of Big Bang of the Big Bang hypothesis, like, and he's mentioning here a, a, a an Austrian scientist named Wuketitz. I don't know what that who that is. Anyway, nobody does. Uh, uh, when so I'll, so when he he says when one considers the consequences of the Big Bang hypothesis, like Wuketitz. Uh, then man is reduced to absolute insignificance on this grain of dust. The Earth. He then quotes uh, Wuketitz as uh, opining about meaninglessness, which, what the fuck does that have to do with evolution? I'd Nothing. Say, yeah. It turns out that the world of young Earth creationism, in the or rather in the world of young Earth creationism, the word evolution isn't actually a piece of language. It's just a Pavlovian bell used <laughs> to induce a certain sense of dread and unchecked rage. Yeah. It's it's code for these people hate Jesus. Yeah, it's just a shibboleth, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. actually refer to a process in nature. <clears throat> right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Git then goes on to his next sub subheading, Scientific View, 
which I assume is another dog whistle, so people will know that what he's writing about is will be A, the sum total of what those damned heathens believe, and B, wrong. Yeah. I'll just, I'm just going to read this for you because it is great. Here we go. Present astronomical knowledge recognizes no singular geometrical point in our universe in accordance with evolutionary ideas. Consequently, there is no geometrical center and also no defined edge. No place in the universe has a special position. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. I read that five or six <clears throat> times, and then my brain inconspicuously dropped out of my butthole, and a few <laughs> seconds, and for a few seconds, I converted to his way of thinking. When I managed to get my brain back into my head, I will not say how, I realized <laughs> that the real point he was making was in that last sentence. He wanted to feel special. And that's when it clicked for me. The reason heliocentrism and evolution are the same thing to them isn't because, because it runs afoul of their stupid book. It's because it runs afoul of their feeling of specialness. Yes. If we're not the center of the universe, or if we're just another species on the evolutionary tree, then, oh God, we're, we're not special. <laughs> Basically, Git's final point is that science doesn't currently have a belief in a central point in the universe, but the Bible says that God made Earth first, and Earth is where Jesus came and died for us, our salvations, so checkmate! That's a pretty solid <laughs> argument. <clears throat> really, yeah. Well, and, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the, our first segment today <laughs> kind of has some arguments there, but sure, Dan, go ahead. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Uh, and I'm going to get to that too, but that but that is genuinely it for Mr. Gitz, uh, for Doctor Gitz. Uh, That's it for argument. Git? That is that is as good as it gets. <laughs> uh, here's his final summation, uh, which I will read verbatim. These few cosmological considerations from the Bible clearly indicate. The, uh, that evolutionist ideas are completely foreign to Scripture. Okay. Sure. Right. I, I mean, again, he has not mentioned <clears throat> anything to do with evolution in the entirety of his little essay, but all right. So <laughs> like, there uh, are still geocentrists in the world. Okay. <laughs> uh, but here's a fun twist. Uh, I found, and it plays off of your stuff, Uncle Mark, Tell me. All that lunacy in that in Mormon cosmology that you seem to think was proof that Mormonism is crazy? Yes. Ha! <laughs> you just shot yourself in the intellectual foot, my friend. You'll be so embarrassed. <laughs> no. Yes, because our friends at that Mormon apologetics air quotes think tank Fair Mormon mm. have news for you. The wrongness of the cosmology in the Book of Abraham actually proves that it's true. <laughs> Bam! Oh Mic drop. You see, in the 1800s, when Joseph Smith was pretending God had taught him how to read ancient Egyptian, everybody already knew about heliocentrism. But his Book of Abraham, if you read it correctly kind of sort of maybe presents okay, a I, geocentric view i feel the the the, the derp meteor careening towards the earth as we speak i'm, I, I'm gonna get out <laughs> of the table for you so here's what we know if joseph smith should have known about heliocentrism but book of abraham presents geocentrism that would have been the view of abraham so when god was teaching abraham about the universe he gave him false information, which Jeez. lined up with what he would have believed already, which uh. obviously proves that... Uh, hang on, I had this all figured out a minute ago. Uh. I lost it. It's <laughs> My gone. head is caving in, like, as yeah. we speak. Literally, I, I, that is... That was that was a, a cute one. I was very... And I went to read the Book of Abraham to try and get at what they were seeing was the geocentric viewpoint there. Uh -huh. You tried to read some of it earlier, Mark. Oh, I, it's just word salad. It is just it un is <sighs> impenetrable. Yeah. You can't, you can't even tell what's a planet and what's a star right. in, in that nonsense, let alone what anybody is talking about at all. 
I yeah. couldn't find <clears throat> geocentrism in it. I couldn't find anything. I, it, I really thought that it was saying somehow that the Earth was revolving around Kolob. I'm not sure, but I defy <laughs> anyone to be able to read that and actually understand what the fuck he's talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, it's, impenet- it's impenetrable, and it's just so, it's just so stupid. It's just... Yeah, wow. I, I, I again, Fair Mormon. It's just such a sad fucking place to have to work <laughs> and really punch is. in every day. Oh, like you get assigned. Okay, today your job is tapers. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> I know the the as as permit Romney the nets around the Fair Mormon building are to keep the people in. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, anyway, guys, God made us first, and we're the specialists. So suck it, Darwin. The end. <laughs> Suck at all the other planets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, good. It's been a very, it's been a very planetary, planetary show today. So I yeah. think uh, enjoy that. Our astronomer friend Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's a big listener, I think he'll enjoy this. Yeah, for um, NGT and and a patron. So uh, and he'll probably have to revise some of his beliefs based on what we've uh, the way we've blown the doors off of this thing. Well, that's what scientists do. Religion d- doesn't. Scientists do. So that's right. how that's how it works. So all right, uh, guys. Well, uh, let's uh, let's. Fly away. Woohoo!